The number one reason you might not want to buy a 5090, believe it or not, in my opinion, it's not the price. I personally own a 2080 Super and a 3090. I decided to skip the 4000 series altogether, I just, just didn't think the performance increase was that huge and the 3090 was still fine. So I've been waiting for the 5000 series and 5090 in particular because I personally like to have this extra RAM and if you can afford it, <laughs> why not? It's not that I can afford it considering the prices right now, but I was looking forward to buy a 5090. But in the past, the way NVIDIA marketed their products, they usually had the XX80 series, like for example, 2080, and then had the 2080 Ti. So 2080 Ti was something like a 5090 right now. So they increased this number to the 90. They had it previously, like maybe 10, 15 years ago. So they decided to come back to it because previously they usually had it 80, then they had maybe 80 Ti, and then they had a Titan. The problem with Titan was that it was not marketed, in my opinion, to the general public. Titan was primarily used more of a professional users, more like prosumers, because professionals, they use quadros and those are totally different. But Titans were not uh, really sold well because mainly of the naming and the marketing positioning and the, also the price, the, the top of the notch usually was the 80. And they're trying to change it because the difference between the 80 and the 90, like in 2080, 2080 Ti, 3080 and 3090 in games, was about 10%. The difference between 4080 and 4090 was about 25 to 30%. But the difference between 5080 and 5090 is about 50% in gaming. So that's a lot. And the card itself is two times more expensive. So obviously they're trying to gather all this money from the vanity, people who have all the lineups in front of them and they want to have the best of the best. So if you bought a Titan previously, some people did it, but it was not like the top, it was something like a separate product. But right now you have this 90, which is on the top, and now it's like 50% more fast than the 80. Now people want to have the best of the best, they're willing to pay twice the price for half of the performance gains. But still, if we take like Steam, for example, and we look into the hardware that people actually own, it's not a mass market. 90 is, is very fra is fraction, a very small percent. Even the 80s is a small percent because those cards are so expensive. It, right now it's crazy, crazy expensive. And most people use the 60s, so there are some people that are willing to pay this price, but it's only a fringe minority, if you know what I mean. So 3080 and 3090, there was uh, almost no difference between those two cards, and uh, I bought 3090 and I could have easily skipped that. Could have taken 3080, I just wanted to have more memory. Uh, 4080, 4090, the increase was bigger, and the price was 1200 for the 4080, it was 1600 for the 4090. So 1600 was reasonable actually, but $2000 for a 5090, and it's not even that, you cannot find it for that price, as well as the 5080, you cannot find it for the price. <laughs> they have this MSRP that m makes no sense, and people scalp those cards for like twice the price. The demand is huge, and the supply is low, and the prices are way too high. In some occasions, I've heard that even Nvidia sells to some verified vendors that will scalp it intentionally, even big big retailers. So you do have this new egg shuffle right now, they sell like three cards per day. Eh, Okay, it's fine. I'll wait. I'll wait some time and I'll buy it when it's lower. Not a big deal. Guys, don't be like that. Don't, don't try to buy stuff like that for like all the money in the world. It, it, it's, it's, frankly, it's not worth it. You can wait. Here comes the reason, the reason for this video. Why I personally, I think I will not buy the 5090. I may buy 5080 later. Not sure. I don't yet need it. Frankly, 3090 is perfectly well right now for me at least, but the actual reason I don't like 5090, heat, the TDP, that's my problem. For some people it may not matter, but let me show you my rationale and why I don't like it. So if you take my 2080 Super, the TDP of my 2080 Super is 250 watts. And that's actually good. 250 watts, that's great. And I'm talking about heat produced by my PC. I'm not talking about electrical bills. That, that's a separate discussion. <laughs> I'm talking about heat. I don't have AC in my room and 250 watts is fine. My 3090 produces 380 watts. It's a little bit higher because this is a Strix model. So I undervolted it and with a decent undervolt, it takes 320 watts and it does not take uh, any hits. The performance is the same. 
So I get exactly the same performance. Like I spent some time doing this, so I spent some time tinkering around a couple of days, but I managed to have the perfect undervolt. And this is exactly the reason, because 380 watts, that's a lot. My PC gets pretty hot and pretty loud because of 380 watts. So lower into 320 is right about normal for me. I don't want to go above it. But 5090 is not 320, it's not 380, it's 575. It's 575 watts. Okay, if you undervolt it, maybe you can get it to around 500 watts. But that's still too, too insane. On top of your 500 watts, you may get your motherboard that consumes anywhere from about 20 to 100 watts, depends on your motherboard really. Then you've got your processor. Right now the processors are crazy as well, may go up to even 250 watts. You've got all the SSDs, everything inside, your RAM. It does not take much, but it still takes some. Then you've got your fans and you've got your PSU. The PSU will differ greatly because uh, the titanium grade PSUs do not produce much heat, but the gold rated PSUs and especially the bronze rated PSUs may add up to 20% of heat to your entire system. So if you're a system like 800 or 900 watts, plus 20%, you've got like 200 watts extra there. And in general, this system may pretty well pull like a kilowatt of power, kilowatt of power from the wall and a kilowatt of power of heat produced. Let's check the wattage from the wall. It is very close to kilowatt. Now it's 880, almost 900. So that's insane. That produces a lot of heat. Let me show you what a kilowatt of heat actually means. That's a kilowatt of heat. I don't really want to have a system like this next to me, basically blowing into my face all day long. That's insane. So what I actually need to do, I need to install an AC into my house, into my flat, in order to use the system, either this, or I put my PC outside of my house, so it's just breathing outside and it's crazy, cannot do it. So the other option, the third one, is just not to buy it, you see? You see where I'm headed? So we can definitely do it, it's just an inconvenience. On top of that, you have melting connectors, lots of information already out, and on top of that, you've got your whole system that heats up too much, way too much. All the components heat up because of this. Your motherboard heats up. General system may become unstable. This is crazy. This is not like some heavy mining equipment, right? This is a computer. It's not a server-grade computer. It's a household DIY computer for people just to use. So yeah, melting connectors, overall PC noise, overall system stability at risk. Of course, you can manage it, it may work, although I've seen some professional users even having problems with connectors that melt. One wire pulls about like 20 amps, and that, that's additional discussion. Maybe NVIDIA screwed up with some load balancing, stuff like that, because even 600 watts is not that much. And 5080, for some reason, does not have this problem, so maybe it's not just the load balancing issue, maybe that actually is the increased power limit. So yeah, guys, even if I had the money, even if the card was actually available on the market, probably I wouldn't buy it. Uh, that's my reasoning. May not be the strongest one. Your cases may be different, but that's... There we go. Stay in touch, guys. We'll see you later.